I'm Aaron with Bowtie Treasures. I'm a Dixie Bell content creator. I'm always happy to share what I'm working on and whenever possible, uh, show you what I'm working on and then show you how it comes, turns out so that when you see the finished pictures, you know how I got there. And I want you to learn how I did it as well. So if you have questions as I demonstrate tonight, don't hesitate to put that in the comments and we will go back and answer as much as we can or to see several people coming in tonight. Uh, I have this vintage buffet that it's a nice small size. I like that. It kind of fits the smaller home, but of course it was the traditional maple look and I want to give it another style. A little bit like I did last week, I want to show you some the different steps. And I'm, you can see on the right here that um, this is just sea glass and I put we're keeping the color simple tonight. Last week, I think I had five or six. Tonight, we just have one coat of sea glass, and then I'm gonna put a wash of fluff on there. I've already started to, I've already applied a little bit of the pallet wood pattern rice paper, and you can see that on the far left. And then later on, we'll probably work in some of the Victorian damask stencil. And I think that works really well together, so I'm excited about that. So be sure to stay tuned for the whole process and we'll get creative as we move on because you never know what we'll run into that we think will add a little bit of fun to this and I want to be sure that you uh, uh, my steps are clear but we'll have some fun with that so, so thank you so much again for uh, tuning in tonight uh, let me show you a couple things on my screen real fast because I want to show you uh, two pictures that I think will help a little, give a little context first of all you'll see here that we have uh, this is a dresser I did last year and I used rice paper on the front as well. And you can see the before and after there. That is the, and I made note of this, uh, let me pull that up real quick, the brushed, the, the blue sketched flowers. And I thought that really accentuated the uh, vintage dresser. So that was really fun to do. So I'm just showcasing a lot of the bells and whistles tonight. And then also the other one I was just going to show you real fast is this one right here is a French provincial dresser that I painted. I'm pretty sure it was Savannah Mist, but on this one I used Dixie Belle's whitewash glaze. So the reason why I'm showing this one is because I wanted to contrast tonight the difference between whitewash and a whitewash glaze and whitewash, whitewashing with paint. So thinning paint down. So there's a, you can kind of get the same look. And um, so just as a contrast, okay? So we'll just keep those uh, tonight as reference. And I, I just wanted to showcase that I'm using a little bit of both of those pieces uh, tonight. And uh, good to see Jay Poe, another content creator as well, joining us tonight. I won't be able to see everybody's comments. Uh, let me see if I can increase the screen a little bit. But once we get going, I'm probably gonna miss some comments. So don't hesitate to drop them in there. I'll come back after the live and, and, and check those out. So let's do this first. Let's jump right into the wash. I have parts of this that are not washed yet. So I wanted you to see that, that portion of the live. And then I'm going to, uh, this one right here, and you can see the difference hopefully, this one right here is already dry. This has been washed and I'll apply the rice paper, the decoupage paper to the front panel. Show you how I do that. This one was dry yesterday, or finished last night. So I wanna show you what my plans are with that. So we'll just do all kinds of stuff tonight. I've taken the drawers out, they're off to the side. We'll bring those back later on. And if we have time, I'll also wash the top. I'd like to get all the washing done in one setting. So that step is done. I will be featuring tonight Dixie Belle's Scarlet Brush. The Scarlet Brush, for the most part, was designed just for this great technique. Not that it's the only reason you would use it, but it's beautiful for washes because it, it's thin, that means you can, it doesn't hold a ton of paint and it's got a gazillion bristles on it, so it's smooth. You can see on my piece here, if I bring in close, there's very little brush strokes. And let me show you a drawer front. This drawer front was washed last night and there's hardly any, I, I did wash it flat so there's hardly any brush strokes on it visible. It just, if it's wet enough, it's gonna settle really nice. If it's too wet, it's gonna drip. So you gotta have a fine balance. 
And I will say for the record that I unfortunately can't give you professional chalk paint advice on exactly the best ratio. I will admit that I wing it all, all the time. And if you know what I mean, because you probably do the same, you're just looking for a good consistency that isn't too wet and it's not too thick. If it goes on really like, I'm gonna say dry, but too hard, it's not wet enough. I probably would say it'd be two parts water, one part truck paint. But I'm, again, I, I rarely measure, I just kind of wing it. Um, I don't know if I could show you the inside of my container, but I haven't mixed it up yet and I need to do that. So I put, picked a big container, one, because I had a lid for it, but two, I'd, yeah, because I had a lid for it. So I'm, I'm reaching into my container right now and I'm just mixing the paint up because usually what'll happen is the heavy particles drop the bottom. But do I have any uh, suggestion as far as, um, should it be freshly mixed? I don't know. I'm, I'm reusing it from last night. We should be okay. But last night I was really happy because I, I winged it and I nailed it, just kind of made it up. But usually if it looks like thick paint, it's not wet enough. So this is a wash, okay? Here's a uh, drip test. How about that? There's, that's how wet it is. Can you use other brushes other than Scarlet? Yes, whatever will get it on there. But I love how wide it is. It's great for the top and um, Sometimes when I'm doing wash, if you watch a lot of my lives, I'll even use things like a sponge or a rag to kind of dab and create some texture. Didn't do any of that here. Remember that picture I showed you of the French provincial dresser, that was straight, just wash. I didn't do any dabbing or texturing. It's just really a nice, lovely look. So I'm just going to demonstrate that for you. If you're doing a wash, you don't need the Mr. Bottle. I'll put that off to the side, but as a reminder, the colors are rotating at the bottom of the screen throughout the live tonight, but pretty simple tonight. Two color sea glass and, and fluff. You can do whatever color combination you want. It could be vintage duck egg and cotton. As long as one color is much lighter than the other, you should be fine. Uh, I do have a rag handy in case I, I make a mess, and I'm sure I will because I wiped plenty of um, drops off the floor last night. It's the nature of working with a wash. Okay, so I'm gonna do my best to keep the camera up close. Just looking for places that need the wash. You know, if you wanna get underneath the lip, that's fine. Uh, I do, I forgot, I do like to keep my rag handy cause like this brush, since it is so wide, I might get on the lip and I'm not ready for that part yet. Or you might miss, just get it where you need to get it. If you get too much, get it while it's wet, because once it's dry, you're gonna be rubbing a little harder to get it off. After all, it is chalk mineral paint and it's very durable. The brush holds a lot of paint, so I can, can put it in a lot of places. So I'll go back in there, just looking to make sure I cover it. Remember, I'm not going to touch it unless I need to fix it or wipe it off. I'm just letting the chalk paint the wash, chalk paint wash, just do its job and be soft. It'll dry a little light, you know, nice and you know, pastelli. I just, <laughs> pastelli is an official word. I mentioned in the title of the live that I'm doing, I called it a soft spring cottage look. I feel like the decoupage that I'm using feels cottage and so does the the mask stencil, but I really think that the, the soft look is really lovely. If any of that doesn't make sense, please let me know and I'll be happy to, I may have to go back and describe it in chat, but not a huge fan of getting on the floor, but that's where we are tonight. So let me see if I can get my camera that far. So. This is the real, real life studio work. But I really didn't want to do, I didn't want to, I wanted to keep this real and keep it, this is how I apply, apply it. Like I said, you, you might find that this brush might be a little bit much for a, a small piece, but when you get to the top and the sides, you're, you're thankful for it. But I just really like how well it keeps the paint and I can cover a lot, a large surface quickly. This won't take us a long time to do. 
what you're really looking for is you're not looking for, you don't want any buildup of paint. And you're moving fairly quickly, but it's not gonna dry fast. So don't feel like, it's like right there, it's still wet. I could touch any of that part. You might also look for any buildup, like it starts to build up towards the bottom. Yeah, see, I'm already making a mess on the floor. Gotta get my drips. So you might uh, just keep an eye on it. You know, you can always run a paper towel along the bottom and sometimes it'll catch that buildup without wiping off the piece. What I really love is that when it's done drying, it, it, it gets into the crevices and the cracks and it really is a nice look. So that's French Provincial I showed you with the Savannah Mist and Whitewash. Very popular piece, sold quickly. It's a great look. Um, probably one of my top Pinterest pieces I have. And it's not because I research trends, it just, you do it and you go, wow, so people love it after all. What, what's not to love, right? But still, that's a great way to evaluate your work is, you know, do other people love it as much as, or, more than you think they do or should or whatever. Okay, now here is a situation where the drawer is set into the cabinet. So I have to pull it out and same idea, just apply that glaze. And it's so forgiving that it doesn't really matter so much if you're going misdirections like this, but just smooth it out. Light touch, light hand, get it on there and then smooth it out. You can use the side of the scarlet. You don't have to always use the end. And then just smooth it out. And then I can put it back in and it'll dry just great. Nothing should be touching in there. So again, I'm just looking for anything that's looking funny. Like it's, I put too much and it's building up and I don't want that. So once you've done that, you should be able to move on. Let's do the side. Once we're done with this two parts, we were go we'll go to the decoupage paper. I'd like to showcase that as well. Nixie Bell is here, so they're definitely helping answer some questions. I appreciate that. So we'll do up underneath. Just get that on there. I will tell you, if you've never used glaze before, glaze has some built-in top coat properties. So when you're done putting a glaze on you almost have already protected it where chalk paint like i'm using right now it's going to feel chalky because it's chalk you know chalk mineral paint so you'll want to still uh, wax or top coat it i use i like clear satin or clear top coats or my preference you see how i'm let me describe what i'm doing i'm just getting the paint on like right there and then just smooth it out let that scarlet dense Bristle count, light hand, not pushing hard, just smooth it out. Remember, if it's dripping really fast and it's not putting a lot of paint down, you need to add more paint to your mix. So if you, this is a good side, this would be a good place to start. If you feel like it's not working out, you could quickly wipe, wipe it off with the damp rag or practice on a practice board. Look how nice it is to just run that down the corner because it's so narrow of a brush. That comes in handy. So I'll just leave that I might just keep an eye on things like, looks like I've got a little bristle or something right there, but it's still wet. I could still go back and touch it up, but try not to do too much after a couple minutes because you might be adding more whitewash to it. But I don't need it perfect, but that's so, so soft, it should do great. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is kind of counter weird, but I'm gonna go with against the grain on the top and I'm doing the edge, okay? So just like that, and then quickly correct that counter work. 
If not, you'll have a, dr a, a dry line there and you don't want that. So this is the part where you kind of want to be able to do all in one setting. It would be good to have a misting bottle handy. I have it right off to my left in case things aren't just going on smoothly. This should be wet enough that it stays wet. Right now I'm just getting it on there. I'm not smoothing it out yet because it's more important right now to get it on there. Okay, so here's the, call it the money move. So nice long strokes, you see that? One side to the other. If you have to take a step, take a step. Try to get it straight. I'm not perfect at this. If it's really wiggly, it may dry wiggly. Just do your best to get it somewhat straight. Because it's so wet, it will settle down, smooth out blend in, you shouldn't have as many strokes. I'm gonna to come to the front, see if I missed anything. See if my camera will show you a better view. There we go. It's a little washed out because of the lighting, but the camera should catch it at some point, give you a little bit of a better view. When I stage the pictures of it, it'll come out a little bit better, but let me see if I can, I'm gonna adjust my lighting just one second. If I go too light, there we go, you see that? So there are some streaks on it, right? That's okay. Those will be part of the piece and look just fine. I have my cutting board here and you can see it on the floor. The cutting board is going to allow me to cut it to the exact size that I need for the front panel. Now, the rice paper is exactly the same three, the three sheets are exactly the same print. Um, so you need to plan on either sh uh, sliding, shuffling, or it's gonna be exactly all the way across. So, I'm gonna take the premise of, and you could also rotate it. So just look at opportunities to change it up so that all three panels don't look identical. So the next step is just do a dry check. It doesn't have to be perfect, but that's generally what I'm looking for right there. And you can see how the two panels are not exactly the same. Okay, next you need to get some top coat and I'm just going to take a one inch brush. Melody asked the base color is sea glass. So this panel here is thoroughly dry because I did it, I did the whitewash last night. This is still wet. So I'm just going to take clear, clear satin. I don't know if that's going to even catch, but I'll try it. There you go. So just a clear coat and I'm going to paint mostly in the in the panel that I'm working on it to me it, it's okay if it gets a wrap off the edge because I'm going to top coat it anyway but I'm not I'm not trying to be sloppy or anything use whatever you want here you can use a, a blue applicator sponge a larger brush whatever you would like that gets it on there quickly. Remember, you know, the top coat's gonna start setting up. You wait too long, so don't put top coat on and then go get a cup of coffee. Try to be ready like I am to put it on there. And don't be super thick, but you also don't wanna be super thin. You want this top coat to grab this rice paper. Okay, and it's fine to use your hand and just um, work work that out. I usually don't stress over bubbles, but I do like to get most of them out. Remember that there are particles, particles may not be the right word. Um, 
There are elements in there that you can feel, so it's not gonna ever be 100% smooth, but if you do this quickly and in a nice, easy way, you should be able to get most of this out. I had thought about, let me try it, because I've used this on other things. You know, Dixie Bell has the uh, thingamajig. Um, you could try to spread out bubbles that way. So I'm not really having to do it, I'm just showing you how you could do it. Just a nice touch. Don't rip the paper with it, but the thingamajig I've used for not just applying stuff through silk screen, but since it's rubber, it does a really nice job of being a squeegee and an air pusher outer. It's an official term. Okay, so that's how I put that on. And that's the same way I would do inside your drawers, anywhere else. I have an idea of something that might work and half the time it's just exciting that it works. So I'm gonna put this here. And what I wanna do is I would like for the stencil for my whitewash, I've still got some left. It might be a little thin, but let's see if it'll work. What I'd like to do is whitewash through the stencil. Tell you what, and I'm just seeing if I'd rather scrape or dab. Let's do the wash. Since we're washing, let's keep in the same manner of whitewash. Again, like I said, I've never washed through a stencil over something that's been top coated over rice paper. But why not, right? I'm gonna pull this off because what I don't know, to be honest with you, is if I wanna do all of it. I like the idea of, I'm a big fan of partial stencils. Okay, friends, you're gonna love it. Bring in. I think that's pretty cool. And I'm just gonna let, if it drips, I'm gonna let it drip. I like that it's not perfect. So we're still using the Victorian Damask stencil. And I'd like to put a little bit of a hint of that stencil on the side as well. This side is already dry. So I, the other side would be foolish for me to do right now because it's still wet but let's work on this side same brush as i just used if it doesn't work i'll switch to another brush so this is where a larger brush might work but the nice thing about a one inch for me right now is that I, i'm not over putting too much i can control it okay so let's do that again let me move my hand over you can tape this if you want so i'm just going to do the same technique Need a little bit more paint if you want, you can maybe mix a little thicker of a mixture for the stencil if you feel like the one you were using was too wet. Or don't do wet. You know, this could be just straight up fluff, but I'm applying it in a wash manner and I'm gonna fade. So up to the top, I want it to be a little bit more filled in. Then as I move down, I'm gonna just fade it out. If it doesn't work, I don't have a plan B. Start over, right? I never start over. Why would we do that? It's not supposed to be perfect, so who's going to judge me? If you haven't subscribed to my Facebook channel, I'd love for you to do that. There's so many videos over there. Pretty much everything that I do for Dixie Bell, I add there as well. A lot of my personal or Bowtie Treasure videos go there. So if you need a good library, Love for you to subscribe there. So again, um, I'll probably put tonight's there. Last Saturday is going to be there soon. And, um, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is working really well, I think. But I say that I haven't even pulled it off yet. So everything below them is just going to get like a quick. And let's. this is the part that I want to be careful on because it's wet. Here we go. Now what I'm gonna do because the, what I rarely do on my stencils like that is I rarely go to the edge and I didn't even think about that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to erase. I don't want a hard edge. So I'm using my rag that's wet 
and I'm going to kind of erase some of the edge. And if you want texture, you can dab this. And I think that's going to help me. Just move your rag around or you'll just keep putting more of the fluff on there. So what I'm actually doing is I'm lifting some of the buildup of the wash and I'm adding texture to it. I want this to feel worn. And my damp, damp rag's doing that. So let me just, again, you can see me kind of erasing. And that's making a big difference. Let's see if I can get a little closer in there. So as a whole, we have two sides that we're working that stencil. This is how you can pull it, tie a piece together is where you use the stencil on the front and then you echo it on the side. And look how subtle it is. You can hardly see it from the, the lighting right now, but when someone sees that, it's just a subtle little extra that puts your piece over the top. I think that's really great. Um, my challenge to you is pick or choose different parts of this and see if you can elevate your next piece and have fun putting a theme together and cohesively tie your piece all together with a theme, whether you wanna go with Bohemian Cottage, Chev, whatever. Um, but you, you need to get the right tools and Dixie Bell has all those. So I'd love for you to use that link that's in the description of this live to go see if you have a retailer in your area or if you, uh, if you don't uh, see what products are out there, be sure to use that link. Check out my website, bowtietreasures.com and uh, I'd love for you to also check out my podcast. It's run, you can see that uh, topic title running across the bottom too. Hey, if this was helpful, let others know. And uh, I'm Aaron with Bowtie Treasures, Dixie Bell content creator here in the Bowtie Treasures studio. Thanks so much for watching tonight. Hope you loved it. We'll see you next time. Do something creative and be awesome. Y'all take care. Bye-bye. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.